<laughs> is it oh, ancillary? Ancillary. Or tertiary. Or tertiary. Or peripheral. Yeah. Oh my All gosh. of them mean like off to the side. Off to the side. Yeah, not the priority, not the focus. I love doing this with you. <laughs> I'm going to learn so much. But tertiary is really fun. Tertiary is, is fun. It's so fun what happened was Lane, before we started recording, said something. Oh, she said she wants the video for you guys to be more beautiful. Right, right. But it just isn't yet because it's a tertiary. Some I don't know what she actually said next because yeah. I cut her off and was like, <laughs> tertiary? tertiary? Um, yeah, you know, we're just making a podcast, trying to get production equipment going, making sure that it sounds correct. Yes. All the things that are priority as opposed to the visual, which is tertiary. Tertiary, which is spelled T-E-R-T. I have to show it to you again because I, I can't spell it loud. T- T-E-R-T-I-A-R-Y. Tertiary. Tertiary. So that brought me back to third grade when I won my school spelling bee. You did. (laughs) did. Jess, congratulations. Thank you so much. Do you remember what the word was? Well, I remember when I went to like the next level and then I got out on words. I think it was both in third grade and in fourth grade that happened. Um, Easy, easy words, Mm -hmm. but tough at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, Guarantee. That's not an easy word Tough. at all. I know. And then sinus, that one got me out. Okay. I think sinus might have been the first year and then guarantee was the next year. Sinus is tricky. That's a lot of, those are like sneaky vowel yeah, sounds. Yeah, was it? U, exactly. Mm-hmm. It is U. S-I-N-U-S. <laughs> Never forget that word. Perfect. Mm-hmm. So anyway, spelling bee. So you can teach me the words and then I can learn to spell them, spell aloud, them aloud and our listeners will have an expanded vocabulary and people will be surprised because they're probably listening at home with their baby or toddler. Mm-hmm. So they think their brain is melting, but actually, <laughs> actually. it's expanding mm-hmm. right this very moment. Yeah. Well, Tertiary. Tertiary. Welcome to another episode of Very Good Enough. I'm Jessica Hover. I'm Lane Dealing Turland. I usually say, and this is very good enough. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> a, a podcast, podcast from of, Very Good oh, Mothers yeah. Club. Go. <laughs> Should we do that again? A pod? No. You. I'm. Was that good? Yeah. I feel like if they've been listening this long, they know. I that think was it's, perfect. <laughs> it's written down in a lot of places. The question I have is: Are you allowed to swear? Have we gotten enough feedback? You're not allowed? We have not gotten enough oh, feedback. Because I I saw somebody said I listen with headphones. Somebody mm-hmm. else said I love the real talk. Yes. Becca's sitting here watching and she's not sure what's going on. So what happened was, oh, so you know. So she's in Thanks purgatory. Becca. Yeah, Becca mm-hmm. listens. It's, it's week seven purgatory. I don't know how this is going to play out. I don't know how this is going to play out because also some of the YouTube comments were like, maybe a little bit less. I'm watching with my kid. There was one I'm well, watching with my kid. There was yeah. one I might want to share this with my 12-year-old niece. And I was like, I sort of feel like the occasional swear for your 12-year-old niece yeah. would be like, hey, don't do that. Yeah. I could see that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I don't know if people would agree with me, but I let my kids listen to certain musics that music that says certain things that I'm like, I'd kind of rather they hear it with me first mm-hmm. than they're going to hear it somewhere. I'm not trying to steal their innocence, but I also am thinking they're going to hear it. Yeah, you're guiding them through life. Innocence yeah. uh, grows into experience, mm. right? And you're just guiding the process of that transition for them. It's not a thing that gets lost. It's a thing that gets incorporated yes. into experience of real life. Should I make my pitch for why I um, want to swear on this podcast? <laughs> that that just feels obvious to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should make your pitch. But um, I guess more like maybe I'll just like roll out. This is how I handle swearing with yes. small children. Sure. So Lane's about to tell a story. There's going to be some language in it that if you don't like the sound of spicy words, then don't listen. But it, it's all relevant to what, where we're going. One morning at preschool, I'm teaching three-year-olds. There, This dad comes in. I've been with this family for maybe like three years now almost. This little okay. girl showed up at our school at 14 months old. Aww, <gasps> Two little. weeks after she was, was at our school, she walked down these big long stairs and she jumped the little bottom stair and she patted her mom on the leg and said, you can go now. I'm home. Oh my gosh. Is that and the her mom leaves ever crying. Heard? <laughs> her mom was like, hallelujah. Yeah, that's, true. that's true. I'm so happy about Whoa. you guys and goodbye. Here's oh my, my tiny baby 
genius child. Wow. So I've been with this little girl for a really long time and her dad sometimes would like drop her off in the morning, kind of like they would have a conflict and he would just sort of scoop her into the classroom and kind of one time he literally like slid her a little bit on the floor oh my toward gosh. me and just uh-huh. left. Um, he would come in with a hairbrush sometimes and be like, I just couldn't and like leave her in a hairbrush on the No ground. way. <laughs> like fresh Parents hair. Parents are allowed to do that? I mean, he did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say the favorite word. Yeah. Sometimes you develop a really strong relationship and yeah. a rapport. Okay. These people were aware that I was in it. Okay. Really in it with them. Were they your favorite or you were their favorite? Two things can both. be true at once. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A little of both. <laughs> a little bit but both. you weren't allowed to say it then. I've had a handful. I have a handful of favorites. Okay. It's kind of the deal. Mm-hmm. This is like a top five. Okay. Family and child. Um, one day he comes in with her. She's like clutching him, kind of like doing that tremble weep that sometimes happens at the end of a tantrum where you know that there's been conflict, oh. but now the child is like so tired Coming and so spent that, yeah. Yeah. And he sort of just like peeled her off and handed her to me and was like, I'm going to let her tell you what happened. <laughs> so I handed my classroom off to someone else and took this little baby into an, an empty class. Okay. Um, and kind of set her up with some toys I was like next to but behind her, which uh-huh. ended up being very much to my benefit because the story that she told me went like this. <laughs> uh, child's name here. What happened this morning with your dad? It seems like everybody's got some big feelings. What's going on? She's hammering. <laughs> hammering something and kind of whimpering. <laughs> This morning, today, I said a bad word. And I'm like, okay, um, do you want to do you want to tell me what it was or do you want to just talk about, I said, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so I get it together super <laughs> rapidly. Okay, okay. Um, thank you for telling me. Not what I was expecting. <laughs> not at all what I was expected. The only time that, yeah. that this particular word, which is, by the way, not a swear, I'm <laughs> opting to use on this podcast or in my real life, that's... <laughs> not what we're talking That's about so i'm like okay um it was it sort of like uh you kind of just like said that word did you maybe like say it t- generally or like to someone was it more of you like a someone <laughs> she's all i was trying to buckle my own seatbelt and my dad buckled my seatbelt for me and i said daddy you are a pussy <laughs> she has heard that line <laughs> No toddler has ever picked that one up just no. in, around in the world. No. I was like, oh, this is a family secret. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me a family secret. This stays between you and me mm-hmm. until I have my own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> until I have a podcast and then I'm going to tell everyone. Yes. So <laughs> this is like a very vocal child. This is a child who has used that swear correctly, heard it, used it in context. Yeah. Was the most powerful word she could think of. So she's sitting there playing with fake tools and I'm like, think, 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 quick. Okay, tools, 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 tools. <clears throat> so child's name. I, we got to, we got to talk about this. That was like a pretty powerful word you used, right? Like that had some impact. And she's like, yeah. I was like, were you a little surprised at how big of a word it was? Did you maybe get more of a reaction than you thought? Yes. I was just trying to say something mean. <laughs> And I, I assume that the response she got was yeah, really big. probably bigger than the dad meant for it yes. to me. So there was a little bit of like the scared feeling of like, whoa, yeah. I use something. I'm like, great. So do you know how like there are really powerful tools in the world? Like right now you have kind of a toy hammer and there's a toy saw here and these are things for you to play with. Would I let you use a real toy hammer in real life? And she was like, maybe if you're right there. And I'm like, all right. Would I let you use a real saw, a real saw. in real life all by yourself? No. No, I definitely wouldn't because that's a tool Mm -hmm. that is used for something really specific. It's actually a very good tool and we need it for a ton of stuff, but your hands are still pretty small Mm -hmm. and you're still kind of like learning how to be in control of the things that you use. So I wouldn't probably give you something that's quite so powerful yet until you're a little bigger and you've had more practice and you know how to use it well. Um, Because I actually think that you would want to use it in the right way and you would probably save it for times when it's really important. Our words are like tools sometimes. That particular word, and then there there are also some other ones that you know you're not allowed to say, right? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> totally knows what this, they are. This could be a children's book. How it's, words are tools. It, it, felt, it felt, it came, it came from a place good. of inspiration in the moment. Yeah. Just like there are big tools in the world, there are some words that actually I use. I don't use that one because I, that particular one I don't really love is the thing I really told her. Yeah. I don't love that one. That means some stuff that we could talk about in a lot of years when you're much older, but 
there are some really big, powerful words that you're not allowed to use that I actually do use in my real life sometimes when I want to. Yeah. Exactly when I'm supposed to, when I want to have like a really big impact. Because yeah. you saw how powerful that word was this morning. Like when I want to use a word that's like really powerful, mm-hmm. I've practiced with my words a ton. So now I am allowed to use them. And you will get practice in your life to know how powerful it is and get strong enough and skilled enough to like know when to employ those words. Really good. And then we went back to our that classroom and I told every adult I yeah. saw. <laughs> to tell you Guess yeah. what child's name called their dad this morning. <laughs> Did you ever process it with the dad? Um, no, no. He okay. absolutely. He's like, I don't want to even mm-mm. remember that. No, 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 no. He was clear that his three-year-old had said that word to him. Okay. That I could definitely tell that yes. she had heard that word somewhere. He wanted to know that it got handled and okay, okay. thank you and goodbye. <laughs> we will never speak of this. <laughs> oh my gosh. No. Wow. Um, yeah. But that's a really good explanation of those words. Mm-hmm. They are not tertiary. <laughs> they are words you use on purpose yeah. when you want the impact that they bring. Mm-hmm. And you skip over the ones you never want to use. Yeah. Like that one. What I didn't tell the three-year-old is that a lot of the times when I use them, it's because I think it's funny. Yeah. Because that's not what I want to use right. those words for <laughs> yeah, while she's through. True. But I also think it's funny. Mm-hmm. I don't generally swear. Um, I... There was a period of my life where I thought it was really bad. Mm -hmm. And then I now no longer think it's bad. Um, I think it's important not to waste words. Yeah. You and I have talked about that. We agree on that. Like, I think there's something to, if you just swear constantly, to me, it comes across a bit lazy. Like you don't have the vocabulary to fit the accurate words in or the better words. So you're just lazy with this language. Um, But I actually appreciate a word perfectly placed Mm -hmm. is so funny to me. Mm -hmm. Um, but now I'm just not in the habit of using it. And so then if I do, it feels a little bit out of place. Like this isn't my, yeah, my mouth doesn't know what to do with that. Yeah. You can Um, always kind of tell when someone is not, not practiced. That's me for (laughs) sure. I started saying them because they were bad and I was like, look how bad I am. (laughs) Yeah. What a bad 11 year old. Yeah. I think personality wise, (laughs) I'm like following the rules so hard that now I don't know how to use them. Mm -hmm. Um, but then and I now have some years of making content knowing right. that I wasn't going to swear in that stuff. And then now I am wide open. My preference is that you speak the way you speak because I love the way you speak oh, generally you. day to day. I love it. And so I think that's something that's special about a podcast mm-hmm. is it's real conversations that yeah. are less edited and curated and just more natural. Yeah, for but, sure. But they can do what they want. They can they do can what tell us. they want. And yeah. I think it's so funny that we're now seven <laughs> seven episodes into this like still talking about the swearing but it also is just like one of those life things that comes up yes. children are going to hear the swearing yes that's just they like might even they live use in it. this world they're definitely going to use have it already used and them. if you're scared of swear mm-hmm. words they're going to use it with great impact sure and like feel the impact of that yes so kind of like all things in life that feel like there's any kind of a charge to them I feel like as much as we the adult can moving those out of the like shock and alarm space Mm -hmm. for ourselves actually keeps us in a regulated space so that children don't have these like secret weapons to shock and oh my mom or like make my dad really mad Mm -hmm. you know just like keeping it in a place of like I know how to talk about this I know what it is I know what our family does and what our choices are yeah and I'm the adult here and I'm gonna go ahead and set the tone yeah your values in our house we don't talk Mm -hmm. like that okay but it's not like a (laughs) 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 exactly exactly okay we are going to transition into a question because what we just talked about we didn't plan that at all but I think that was beyond like (laughs) that was beyond just a a hilarious story Mm -hmm. that was use your words well yeah powerful and important this is just like a quick hack Uh since we're having a whole podcast about words almost yeah powerful and important and clean are some of my favorite euphemisms for things Hmm. like instead of like when we we talked about um bodily bodily autonomy and being able to name your body parts Mm -hmm. and like how to talk about like your your genitals are like really they're important and powerful part of your body Mm -hmm. they need to be kept safe and clean Mm -hmm. as opposed to like that's very private and secret and we don't talk about it Mm -hmm. you know like any of those things that there's kind of an emotional charge about when you feel because like there's even don't you think there's even a difference between private and secret Mm -hmm. because I think when it comes to like these parts of our bodies Uh right are are just there's a way I like I think of it with Eloise I'm like this is private but it's not secret we can talk about it in our family it's hilarious there's no like it's awesome 
but it is private as in other people don't get to come be a part of this right now. Yeah. But right I think now, that that's right right now. <laughs> no, totally, yeah, you know? totally. And you just leave that part. Yeah. Totally blank. Yeah. Um, but that, that's something that is going to function for you because you're a person who's not afraid mm-hmm. about those parts of your body. Okay. You might, other people might like feel t- a tightness inside about it. And mm-hmm. when they say that word, what comes out is like, like private, you know, like it's oh, like, like a private scared. part uh-huh. scary. where there's that withdrawing back for okay. me. I feel like, uh, important and powerful are very mm-hmm. like easy ones. Mm-hmm. Those are like anytime you feel yeah. scared or there feels like there's extra emotion around something. Yeah. To me, those are like easy substitutes yeah. for words Makes that sense. feel hard to say out loud. Okay. That's just like a personal hack. And then you keep it clean. That's what you mean by mm-hmm. clean is yeah. related to that. Mm-hmm. Okay. What about, but you wouldn't say like certain word is clean or dirty. I, I wouldn't can't imagine say dirty. Saying that. No. Yeah. I, can't I don't like dirty. I yeah. don't like, um, this is just like a general preference. I'm not saying there's no place for mm-hmm. it, but I do try to keep things uh, kind of neutral, mm-hmm. try to keep the language neutral. And that does come from like having a professional background as opposed to it being my own children. Yeah. Um, so I work really hard to keep any language out that might have judgment on it. Yeah. Like what I want is for them to encounter all of the things in their life from a neutral place mm-hmm. that is like clear and open and be equipped with what they need to manage that mm. to like see the world be able to stand what they see because they're not scared or endlessly trying to navigate like is this good or bad am I right or wrong mm. like I want them to just be able to like encounter it ingest think about it make choices mm-hmm. it's kind of like my ultimate goal yeah. for children okay so I try to stay in kind of a neutral space that's really sweet I like it I like it about you, Thank you. offline I like it about you non-judgmental <laughs> is very refreshing Okay, so there is someone in our community who asked a question. I think it'd be good to dive in. This is a pretty broad question, Mm -hmm. so be warned. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of places you can go with this, but Tammy says, I believe Tammy is from the UK. Tammy says, hi, Jess and Lane. I'm struggling at the moment. I feel my daughter doesn't listen and just does what she wants all the time. I try to do gentle parenting, but I'm finding it increasingly difficult. Mm. Any tips on dealing with a strong-willed 2.4-year-old? I'm sure you've seen many strong-willed 2.4-year-olds. I think almost all 2.4-year-olds are pretty strong-willed, at least in some area of their life. That makes sense to me. That is a nice, big, broad question. Absolutely just want to start with a lot of affirmation that life with a 2.4-year-old is so so complex Mm -hmm. because they are such complex beings going through such a complicated internal change so it's hard because these are people who are like volatile and and vibrant and full Mm -hmm. of color and some of those colors are like bright hot red and some of those colors are like gray stonewalling you Mm -hmm. they're just like so full because it's like the beginning of them even being able to understand that they're separate from you. Am I mm-hmm. right? And like they can push back and then look and be like, are you still there? Yeah. So the strong will might actually, I mean, I'm sure there's variations of strong will in toddlers, mm-hmm. but it might actually be a quality of a toddler is to have a strong will that pushes back against the parent, right? Yes. To have a will at all has just, just begun for mm-hmm. her. She's just emerged as a person who knows that she exists and she's not the same as you. She just spent all of that like late one-year-old and early two-year-old making super sure that you're a person and that she's a person and kind of exploring the distance there. Like how far away can I get from you before I get scared because actually I'm still small and I want to come back. And how hard can I crash back into you to see if we'll like reabsorb into being the same person? What's the distance and where are the edges? Hmm. So you're now at two and a half in a very where are the edges moment. Mm she feels confident that she's real and that there is space. And now it's like, it's almost like she's running her hands along the edge of life Mm -hmm. and finding out like what's soft and what's rough and what Mm -hmm. moves when you push on it and what stays really hard. And if I push on it again, will it stay really hard or will, Oh, that one budged. Oh my gosh. Now Mm -hmm. I have to restart this cycle of experimentation to find out like, will it push further now that that one has moved? Maybe I'll circle back to all the other things and see if any of those will move again. How interesting. Very scientific process. Yeah. What she's really doing is developing a self. She's trying to like fine tune what it means that she has a self and that you have a self. And that's the case for kind of like all beings now. She's like, well, that one's over there and this one's over here and that one's shaped this way and this one's shaped that Mm -hmm. way, both like literally and like metaphorically shaped. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but you, mom, Tammy, are for sure receiving the brunt of it because you're her origin space. You're her constant, the thing that's absolutely always there. And um, because you're also a person, you are also a variable. So sometimes when she comes, you do one thing. And sometimes when she comes, you do another. And that's just because you're a person. And sometimes it's yes and sometimes it's no. And she just is endlessly exploring kind of what that cycle means, kind of filling up her stockpiles of like person data in the background. You can't have a will Mm -hmm. if you're not a separate person. So this is really her first opportunity to find out, like, what does it mean that I'm a force in the world? And um, gentle parenting can mean a lot of things. I know that there are some, like, very particular terms, like, there are Mm -hmm. definitions for that term in particular that is a style. But then also, I think that people use it kind of colloquially. And I don't know which one of the ways you mean it. Um, I don't know a super ton about it as like a system. I've always sure. just kind of been like, I'm going to just like take that as it sounds. Yeah. But what I know about the word gentle is that it does not mean not firm. You can be both gentle and firm. And so I want to encourage you that there is space for you, Tammy, to sort of firm up with mm-hmm. this child and practice showing her where the edges are. Because that's kind of her big question for you is like, where's the line? And by the line, I don't mean like the line you can never cross. Mm -hmm. I just mean like literally the boundary line. Mm -hmm. Like our most basic boundary is our skin, right? Like you can't pass through my skin. Mm -hmm. If you do, there's damage and blood Mm -hmm. comes out and things have like problem. (laughs) It's a problem. Yeah. Um, And so she just like is actually even fundamentally understanding like I have skin. so loud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you showing her where the edges are is you teaching her about human boundaries and human life because there is an edge Mm -hmm. and what a toddler really actually wants is to find it. Mm -hmm. They want you to be sort of the proverbial sea cliff that they can kind of crash their waves against that never moves. Mm -hmm. That's actually where a feeling of real safety comes from because if you are the thing that is supposed to show them where the edge is and you never do, and they, they can't find sort of like the boundary space mm-hmm. out in the world, it ends up leaving a person kind of psychologically feeling like a, a sort of a drift. Anxious. Yeah, anxious. Yeah. Because we, we know and we can feel that we're not actually the most powerful being in the universe. Mm-hmm. We don't want to be. Right. We want to be protected, and we mm-hmm. want to know, we want to have an organization to life and know mm-hmm. where this goes and where that goes and where I belong and what belongs to me and what belongs to you. Mm-hmm. Like we're looking for separations between this and that because that's a world that has order yeah. and safety. Yeah. So showing her this is where the edge is and it will not move in yeah. the places where it's important that the edge doesn't move is actually going to provide her with a lot of safety. Mm-hmm. And I'm not telling you that it won't cause a reaction because it certainly will. Mm-hmm. It certainly will. But surviving those big reactions and being with her and attuning to her in those and not moving the line Mm -hmm. is long term the process that's going to teach her how to be an an organized and powerful person who knows where her power is and where other people's power is and respects both of those. Mm -hmm. That's really good. I I am just coming. So I have a three year old, which means I just passed this stage that Tammy's in. And I have an almost two-year-old who is approaching this and her strong will is coming out. Uh, I don't know what gentle parenting is in the way that Tammy knows it either. I know what I've heard. So similar to you, I know that there's extremes um, of it, I believe, that like doesn't believe in saying no. And I can just tell you, I say no to my children. I don't know. Did you say no to the kids you worked with? Okay. Yeah. And I, I think the way that I view it is that it's really helpful and good in the way you're describing it creates a safety. It helps them understand how to use this amazing strong will in the way that is good um, Mm -hmm. because, you know, they can grow up to be amazing leaders and people who love really well and are good listeners and understand where, where no leads to the right things. Mm -hmm. And if we're not showing them a no now, I think the world's going to be really surprising. Yes. <laughs> I don't know, but maybe someone would, would explain gentle parenting to me and convince me otherwise right now. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not convinced. So what I will say is that through consistently showing Wilson edges, as you're describing, basically being firm and giving him boundaries and, and being able to say like, yes, we do act like this in our family. No, we do not do this to our sisters. We do, you know, right. whatever it is. And being consistent about that, it's been so cool to see his strong will learn. Um, I don't know what the appropriate word is, but almost like 
how to behave and like where to surrender and how to have big feelings, but then handle them appropriately um, as versus taking over the room. Right. And so, yeah, I just want to say I'm doing it and I see this as well right now in my current life. There's so much to say. <laughs> There's so much to say, but to wrap this episode up, I think I have like a little bit of a template for you, Tammy, and you, everyone. The goal, the goal here is for you to be able to guide your two-year-old into using tools that are super successful for her and train her to drop the tools that are unsuccessful. So like when she wants something from you and is choosing screaming or hitting or whatever the undesirable behavior is, your goal is to make that really unsuccessful so that the data that she gets is this is not going to work for you. And I actually say that out loud a lot to two-year-olds. Oh, I hear that you're screaming at me. This isn't going to work for you. This is this doesn't work for me. This isn't going to work for you. What you could do is come put your hand on my leg and say, excuse me, Miss Lane, and then I would be happy to listen to you. Mm. You know, the thing that just says, like, not that, this is what you can do. Um, and then marking the task when she does do the thing that is desirable. Oh, thank you for coming to tap me. I'm so happy to listen to you. These things that say, like, yes, this, not that. And I do feel that there's a way to be emotionally present and loving and gentle toward your child, even when you're saying, no, thank you. I see that you wanted to do that thing. I said, no, thank you to that. You're welcome to do this. And I see that that's having some big feelings for you. Mm. You're very welcome to stay right here next to me and have those big feelings. I'm going to keep making dinner. That's I'm really right good. here for you whenever you'd like. And you see that there is no in there. And yeah. I'm happy to say like, oh, no, thank you. I can tell that you have everything that you need and that this yelling is just trying to get me to do something different. I'm saying no, thank you, but I'm right here next to you if you would like to whatever the thing is that you'd like. That's really so showing yes this way, no thank you to this way. I'm going to make it really successful for you to do the thing that is desirable. And I'm going to calmly, gently, quietly within myself, make it really frustrating mm -hmm. for you to utilize this tool that is not working, not right. working and That's not going to work in life. Um, and to That's me, this is what like logical consequences actually look like is being like, I'm going to make sure to reward the successful behavior and I'm going to make sure to thwart the unsuccessful behavior. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, you nailed it on that. Oh, thank that you. That was a perfect answer. <laughs> Could have done better. Okay. Our big goal is to keep these episodes 30 minutes or less because we want to honor your time because we like you so much so and you're much. doing such a good job. So thank you for being here. Remember, you can join our online community, verygoodmothersclubhouse.com. We have a membership group. You can submit questions there. Get access to us anytime you want. You can find us on Instagram. We would love to know you better. Feel free to reach out. You're doing such a good job. Thanks for everything. Goodbye.